Welcome everyone. Alleluia, Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to my home on this special Easter Sunday. I'm glad you will join us for worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's first lesson is a reading from the letter to the Romans. Chapter 6 verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 114, and I invite you to read the psalm along with me. Hallelujah! When Israel came out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the hills like a young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like a young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I decided to do my sermon outdoors in front of this beautiful sculpture that's in our backyard. It's been in Susie's family for many years, and uh, now it resides in our backyard so we can enjoy it. You'll probably hear the wind chimes in the background as the wind has picked up a little bit. You may hear a neighbor's dog or see some folks walking by or maybe even hear a passing car. This is so unusual. I've never done anything like this before to record my sermon sitting in my backyard and using my iPhone. Indeed, there is no question that this Easter is very different from all other Easter's we have ever experienced. Our church buildings are empty. We're likely sitting around in our pajamas or maybe a t-shirt and sweatpants in that beautiful Easter brunch that we so delicious will probably just be made up of leftovers from our refrigerator. Some of you may be feeling isolated and wondering if we're ever going to be able to go outside and be around people again. Some of you may still feel fearful about your safety or concerned about the safety of your loved ones. Yes, without a doubt, this Easter is different, very different, unlike any Easter celebration in living memory. But as I sat with this gospel story, from Matthew, and as I read multiple reflections about this first Easter, something occurred to me. This Easter is like the very first Easter that happened. I mean, I mean, think about it for a moment. There were no crowds gathered around the tomb to celebrate Jesus' resurrection on that first morning. In fact, many in the crowd who welcomed him and waved their palm branches and shouted, Hosanna in the highest, well, they were gone. Many of them left, abandoned, turned away from him, spent their time heckling and mocking him as he passed by them in their streets carrying the cross. Now instead, what we find in the Gospel of Matthew this morning is a story of a very small gathering. Two women. That's it. Two women. An incredibly small group, for sure. 
much like we are, confined in our gatherings. These were the first witnesses to the resurrection. These were the first invited to celebrate and to worship the risen Jesus. And look what was happening with the rest of the disciples. I mean, they weren't even there. We know that they wouldn't even see the risen Jesus for a few days until a later period and in a different location. They were living in isolation and fear in a place where the door was locked because they were concerned about their safety. They were unsure of what the future would hold for them. They were unable to imagine their lives ever returning to normal. Doesn't this sound familiar to you, for us, for what is happening in the world around us? So maybe this is a good place for us to start today. Yes, Easter is different. Yes, it feels strange and even surreal to, be worship, to not be worshiping in all of our rituals and traditions. Our sanctuaries are empty, but I can imagine it being decked out in splendor. That beautiful festal frontal hanging and adorning the altar and Easter lilies everywhere. Iolites blazing and the choir and the organ and the bell choir all singing out, ringing out, Alleluia! Yes, I miss it too. But Easter hope and courage came first to a few people who were overwhelmed by isolation and fear and who could not imagine what life would now be like. My friends, nowhere in the Bible or in the creeds or in the Book of Common Prayer does it say that God promises that all of our worship will be grand. Nowhere does it say that our churches would be full or that our lives and future would, be, would unfold in the ways that we hoped and plan. But God, in and through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that we have celebrated this past week and that we celebrate here today, has promised and is faithful to his promise that he is with us and for us at all times and through all conditions, not only in joy but also in sorrow not only in triumph, but also in tragedy. Not only in gain, but also in loss, in peace and fear, in times of plenty and in times of scarcity. God promises and is faithful to his promise to be present. In the cross, God meets us, especially where we most need God. And these are often places that we least expect to find him. Places like hardship and struggle and loss and in death. But you know, no experience, no matter how difficult or how awful, and no person, no matter how sinful or, or, or lost, is truly forsaken. Because God is always where we most need him to be. And in the resurrection, God promises that all of these harsh realities do not have the last word. That God's light is more powerful than darkness. That God's love is stronger than hate. And that the life God offers us through Jesus prevails over all things, even death itself. Yes, the world around us has changed. Yes, this Easter is not the same. But the good news of Easter has not changed. And no matter 
where we are, no matter what our condition, no matter how many of us can or cannot gather, the Easter message that God promises will never change. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, this nation, and the whole world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer, our bishop, for Mauricio and the people of Diocese of Brasilia, and all other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for those on our prayer list, for Stephanie, Phyllis, Elaine, Gloria, Terry, Steve, Dave, Eric, Ashley, Brian, Kinsey, Jude, Gail, Dan, Jerry, and Susan. Please now add your own intentions. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. I invite your own thanksgivings at this point. I'm thankful for the gift of technology that we can use to stay connected during this time of the pandemic grateful for family and for friends and for good neighbors. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Especially today, let us pray for Ada Robbins, the mother of John Robbins. Please add your own petitions. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I hope you will turn to those in your home and offer them a sign of peace. If you are alone,
to just sit for a moment and give thanks for all those in your life that you would extend God's peace to today. Let us continue our celebration with the act of reception. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, and for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life, until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in the right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. I invite you now to Focus your attention on the elements as they are here and to offer your prayers and yourselves to God at this time in whatever way that you are finding meaningful. Please join me now in the act of thanksgiving. Blessed, praised, hallowed, and adored be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory in heaven and in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. 
Let me never be separated from you. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. May God Almighty, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I wish you all a holy and blessed Easter Sunday.